Happy Friday, everybody. We're looking at our last day of our composite area calculation lessons, and it's a doozy. It's got some missing sides. You're going to have to use some skills I call algebraic thinking skills to figure out what missing sides are before you calculate your area. So you really need to look at the whole shape, think about where length and width are. Uh, I hope you really enjoy it as much as I do. Like I said, these are like mystery questions to me with visuals, trying to figure things out. Before we get going with the lesson, I have a few shout outs to be given out to people. Um, right now, this week, we have an MVP in DePaul. That person's DeAsia. She was falling behind before. DeAsia is now ca all, totally caught up, working really hard every day. Huge shout out to DeAsia this week. Also, Jariel. He's so far in Amplify. He's into the second, well into the second program. He and Christian. So, DeAsia, Jariel, Christian. Keep up the great work, guys. You're my huge shout outs for this week. Um, everyone else, keep working too. Next week, I am trying to update the, to you new video editor, editor software, which will allow me to not only use special effects, but also to put the music in the background. So um, if you're nominated for a shout out next week, uh, Roderick was trying to earn it for today. He didn't get in in the deadline. Um, I'll put in some music requests for the opening part of the video. So I want to have that updated for next week. Be that, be that person who's caught up working really hard on all your assignments so you can get that shout out and choose the music for next week's videos. But for now, it's time to go to Google Classroom, click Assignments tab, the Classwork tab, go to our lesson on composite area number three for Friday, and pull it up because we're going through the problem solving task. Read it, read it on your own, try it, and then we'll go over it together. Let's get going. All right, friends, I know this lesson is called Missing Sides, and you're going to see not all of them are missing sides necessarily, but when we split them up, we're going to see that, that that's a problem. So let's at our first problem solving task. We can figure out what I mean when I say that. It says, Miss Smith is hoping to buy carpeting for the basement of her house. To be sure she buys enough carpet, Miss Smith needs to determine the area of her basement floor. Use the diagram below to determine the area of the basement floor. Be sure to show your work. Again, showing your work could mean on paper or it could be on the computer by copying and pasting the pictures the way you're going to see me do this. So this kind of incorporates some of the skills we had in our last lesson. Try to see if you can find the area of Miss Smith's basement. Pause the video now, try it on your own, see what you can do. All right, so hopefully you tried that and got did, did some work and worked through it. It's gonna be hard for me to go to go through misconceptions today or like the, the things you might have done wrong, but a really quick one to go uh, through how to break the shape up and how that will lead to some of our confusion. So. Basically, I think most of you probably broke this up into three pieces, and that's the way to start. The first step for all these problems is always to break it up into rectangles. So I'm going to go to copying, pasting, going to go to drawing, new drawing, and then sorry, pasting in the new drawing tab so I can work on it. And this is again the skill I, uh, if you want to try to do it all on your computer, this is the best way to do it. And there's more than one way to break it up. You could have drawn a line this way and there. And there, again, not perfectly straight, beautiful rectangles, and now I've got three rectangles, that's fine, you could do it that way. Or you could have done it this way, drawn a line here, although again, not very straight, Mr. B, and here. Um, either one, whatever makes more sense to you is fine. Uh, I'm probably actually going to go with the second one where you broke break it up again. You need three rectangles no matter what. I'm going to break it up the second way just because it's easier for me to visualize it like, like that. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to try to do a better job making it straight. And now I have three shapes, so I'm going to need area A, area B, and area C. So I'm going to get A at the top here, A, B, and then the, the large one over here is going to be C. And um, I just take it one shape at a time before I, there, there's gonna be some problems here we're gonna run into but I'm gonna take it one shape at a time we'll see we'll deal with the problems when we get there so let's start with area a and this is where the same skills we've been working on are uh, area a equals length times width so we got to find the length of a remember it's a new shape it's cut off here which is the longer side so it's either 12 or 7 and for area a 12 is being split up. It's no longer 12 anymore, so the length of A is actually 7, and the width is 3. Again, these are the full 
sides of that rectangle. Just trace the outside of the rectangle. That's my tip to you. Trace the outside of the rectangle so you can see what the sides are and find out what the labeled ones are. So area A equals 7 times 3. Area A equals 21 uh, square meters. That's it. That's it for A. Not too bad. Let's go to B. Area B. Broken it up. It's going to be length times width again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the outside of the shape with my cursor or my finger across. That's that full length there. That means that full length from here to here is 10. Down there is 3. This one's supposed to be 15, but that one got cut off, so it's not 15. That would be the whole length of the side, but that line's breaking this up, so it's not 15. The length of, a of B is 10, so area B equals 10 times 3. Area B equals 30 square meters. All right, let's go to C. So far, it's been we're cruising along. Nothing has been different so far. So let's go to C and see why today's lesson, I think, is hard. Area C equals length times width. Same thing. So now I have my rectangle C. It's really big. Um, and I see I have 12 on one side. And that 12 is probably the longer side. But this is going to be a shorter side. And I have it. So I'm going to say area C equals 12 times this side and this side. These are my widths because this this is 12. That means I know that the other side is also 12. That's a very bad looking 12. And that 12 means like this whole side here is 12 because it's a rectangle. They're equal on opposite sides. But I don't know what this is. There's nothing on the shape that tells me. This is what we call algebraic thinking, finding a missing value. So I'm going to kind of put my W on here. This is the width of this shape. I don't know what it is. I'm going to write W here. W, question mark. What is it? So I have to use hints from around the shape to help me figure this out. I know that this line all the way from here to here is 12 because 12 is there. I also know that this line here is 7. We can see that that's already, we know that's 7 because it's written right here. So that means from here to here, is 7 too. Oops, I shouldn't, that circle is not helping anybody. I apologize. Let me get that out of there. That this line is also 7. If this whole line is 12 from here to here, and this line is 7, what is W? And this is just kind of, again, this is algebra. If you have W and 7 are put together, this line and this line together equal that line. So that means W plus 7 is 12. Knowing our fact families with addition and subtraction, we know that that means that if I take 12 minus 7, if I cut off this much of, of it, get rid of, oh, geez. If I draw a line here and I say, well, I want just this piece. I just want the W side of it. I don't want the seven side. And I get rid of this over here. Then all that's left over here is how much? 12 minus seven, cutting off seven of it. Left over is because 5 plus 7 is 12. Again, we cut the 12 into two parts. One part is 7, the other part is 5. So the missing width of area C is 5. So 12 times 5 tells me that area C equals 60. 12 times 5 is 60. And then, just like any of the other composite area problems we do, we just need to get our total area. Total area area equals, and they were, these pieces are being put together to make the total area, so we just put them together, we just do 21 plus 30 plus 60. It's a nice easy one to do in my head, because 3 plus 6 is 9, so that's 90 plus 21, 9 plus 2 is 11, that's 1, 
111 square, square meters. Again, the trick of this question was finding where that missing width was for C. And all the shapes today are going to have one of those missing widths or missing lengths. And you're going to need to find out by splitting up a shape aside or by finding a side by adding or subtracting to find out what that shape is. So the today's video is a little longer. We're going to do some problems together. Let's do it. What we learn in our problem solving task today? We learn that we can use clues from around the shape to fill in a missing width or a length. And to do that, we need to use addition and subtraction, which we call algebraic thinking, to find a missing value. So I'm going to show you some quick examples of how do you do that algebraic thinking and when you're going to add and when you're going to subtract. And do that on paper right here so you can see it. And then we'll do it in the problems as we go ahead. So again, find those missing sides when we need it. Let's do it. All right. So I pulled up two simple drawings here. Uh, and this is only going to make sense again. These skills will only make sense if you really mastered Monday and Wednesday's lessons. So if you haven't watched those videos to master breaking up shapes, go do that first because that's the first step. And this is making things get a little harder. So it won't make sense to you unless you understand those really well. Let's look at our first shape here. We have a question mark. We don't know what this side is, but we know these two sides over here. How can that help us find the missing side? The key things to think about is these sides are all parallel, which means they're opposite sides of right angles. It also means that if you put these two sides together, if you're traveling three this way and then five that way, total that direction, this shape travels those two distances combined. Combined means addition. So we got to put together the three and the five to get the total length this way. And you can just see that it goes three lines across here on the line paper, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, a total of eight. Um, that's just a random coincidence. It's not actually a skill that you can use because papers will not always match up like that. But in this case, the question mark is three plus five. The question mark is eight. Three five equals eight so our question mark is eight in this one we have a difference different thing we have a total length of six down here we have parallel sides to that are four and question mark so if the whole shape is going that far across and it's made up of two pieces four and this how far is it going that in that little section there so again the total is six one part of it is four, that little piece right here from here, like across here, if I break the shape up, I'm gonna do that real quick. I know, this is my favorite way to do it, is to actually just break the shape up and see it, that this six, that much of it is four, so how much of it is left over there? You'll notice that my drawing is not to scale because you know it's not four, because four plus four would not equal six. You don't use the drawings to guess, oh, that looks like four to me. Don't do that because the drawings you're going to see on, on tests and quizzes won't match up to what won't even make sense sometimes. Because in this problem, that actually should be 4 plus 2 equals 6. So our missing side is 2. The way you can find it out is by just kind of like knowing your number sense really well like that, that 4 plus 2 is 6. If you don't have that kind of number sense or the numbers are harder to work with, you need to say 6 minus 4 equals 2. So I'm taking how much further do you need to go to get this amount? You need to go two more. Six minus four equals two. The missing side there is two, which means the missing side down here is also two. Hopefully that made what was helpful to you to see that there was, we can use that to find the missing sides. It's gonna be a little harder when you're working with the shapes with all other sides labeled on it too. I just had the important sides labeled here. You're gonna have information you don't need sometimes. But you know that if there was this number was a seven over here, oops, that's a bad seven, but that seven has nothing to do with this side because it's not even going the same direction. This could be very long or very short. All that matters are the lines that are parallel. Question mark, this is why we talk about parallel lines are so important in our previous unit because they're all traveling the same direction. So try finding the opposite sides that are parallel, break the shapes up, and label those new pieces to help you figure out what's left.
Try these skills when doing guided practice. Again, this video is a little long. Use what you need. Go as far as you need with the video to get the work help you need for the exit ticket and the packet. Go. All right, here we are. We are back with guided practice, and we're ready to really just break up some shapes and find out some missing sides here. The good news is, and I'll tell you this again and again, there's no right way or wrong way to break up the shape. Some ways will end up being easier than others, but you have enough information to solve it however you break it up. So try to break these shapes up, try to solve it on your own, because again, you're gonna figure it out in yourself, you're gonna form those skills a lot stronger in your brain than if you just listen to me tell you. Lifting heavy weights makes your brain stronger. Just sitting there listening to something doesn't. If you're stuck, solve it along with me at least so you're thinking while you go. Don't just stare at the screen watching me do something. So here we go. Here's our problem. I'm gonna copy it. Copy the picture, go to insert, drawing, new drawing, paste it in here so I can work on it as I'm going. And this is again, something you can do on your Chromebook just as well by, by right clicking and copying and pasting. So here's our shape. I'm just gonna say, I like that this one already has, looks like, looks obviously like an L shape. I'm gonna cut the tail of the L off. Feels like the easiest way to do it for me. Uh, worked pretty well before. Making two new shapes. I've got shape A and a shape B. I'm gonna do the A's first, because the first piece I have. A, B. All right, let's go through it. Let's find the area. Which if, don't worry about the missing sides yet. Don't worry about all the stress about finding things out. You'll do that as you go through the problem. Start with the things you know. You know you need to write out the formula. Area A equals length times width. Area A equals, let's see if I can find the length. I trace the outside of the shape. Oh, that whole length is six. From one end of the shape to across the shape is six. And that short side is two. I can go from end to end. This 10 is getting cut up. It's no longer 10, so I don't have a length of 10. The length is six. Six times two, my area of A is 12. And that's square centimeters this time. All right, let's go to B. Area B, and let's trace the outside of B. I'm noticing already this side doesn't have a measurement. This side down here is now being partially added on. So there's no but measurement here and there's a new part of it here. And then going across here, well, that's not 10. I mean, it's part of 10, but it, that 10 got cut up. But that nine is a full side of my shape. That looks like the length, it's a longer side of my shape. So I'm gonna say it's nine times W. What is W? And if I'm on paper, I always do this, but it's a little not as important here on the computer. That side is W. What is W? And I have a couple hints here. So W, I could also write W's down here. It's the same on both sides, so W's down here. What I like to do is I broke up this 10. So let's say what we know about the 10. And, and you need to go back to rectangle A to figure this out. Rectangle A is six centimeters wide. That's true on the top as well as the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is right here, draw a, right, a six down there. And then that, that is really bad placement for that box. Six. And that six centimeters is not the whole side. It's just this side from here to the line that we've drawn because we split it up. It used to be 10. Now I cut off six, what is left? Hopefully you're thinking four, because if you take six of something and you cut out, sorry, you take out 10 of something and you cut out six, then you've got four left. 10 minus six is four. So the width here is four, which means the top is also four. I don't really need to do anything on this side. The whole thing would be nine, because that's nine, uh, but I don't need it. All I need to know is that that's four. The width is four, nine times four, so area B, equals nine times four, 36. I'm gonna try to speed this section up. Area B, oh, so, oh I didn't do length times width, oops. Um, insert here, total area equals 12 plus 36. And again, you can see how weird that is. It just doesn't even really make sense that that would be 12 and that's 36. They look about the same size. But that's how these shapes work out. 12 plus 36 equals 48 square 
centimeters. There you go. Save it, close it, move on. Huh, I didn't delete this one, huh? This one shouldn't even be here, it's so easy because it's not, it doesn't even have that many missing sides. So I'm gonna put this one in fast motion so you can try it, try it and check your work. shape. I'm not subtracting here because I'm putting all three together. I'm combining all three. That's going to be 10 plus 2 plus 10 up, equals 22 square millimeters. Save and close. Moving on. Let's get harder. That's good work. Hmm. All right. This is more like it. Copy, insert, new drawing, paste. First step is always to break it up. And you could break this into four shapes if you wanted to. Um, one way, I'm gonna break it up into fewer because it keeps things easier. I'm breaking into three. First shape here is the top. Then I have a second shape right here. So it's kind of a stack of three rectangles. We'll just go from the top down a b c oops c add my text box over here all right going for area a is always going to be length times width so let's go to let's go to a and find out what our length and width are tracing the outside so here my first side from here to here, that's the full side is three. That's probably, it looks like it's the same on both. So this one's not labeled, this one's not labeled, but that's three. So this one's going top to bottom, it's three. Side to side is also three. That's the full length and width. Area A equals three times three. Area A equals nine. Done. Let's go to area B. All right, this is where things are gonna get a little more complicated because I can see here I have, this is two, but that's not the full length of my shape. That's not labeled. Then going down here, that's six is being split up. That's not six. Going across here is totally unlabeled. No information on what that side is. And then up to here, up top to bottom here is a total side. That side is three. So length, area B is length times width and area B equals Three, oh, well, three is the width probably. So I'm going to say length times three. So what is the length? Um, you go to the shape. I'm going to drive my quote my like L with a question mark. L. What is it? I'm going to go there and put one here. So I know that it's all the way across here, and there's not really information here. But if I go up here, I see I know part of it is two. So from here to here, the length is two. So what is more is on here. And I know that because this is three, that this also must be three because that, that width and this width are the same, which means that two and three together, the length of the shape, putting those two sides together is five. Not a question mark, it's certain. That means the bottom length is also five. And I can find my area. I'm gonna change my length to five, because I know that. And five times three. Fifteen. And no, those are supposed to be square centimeters. Area C. You might think it's going to be hard, but actually if you trace the shape, it's going to be pretty easy. Area C is length times width. So start in the corner here, going down 
that side is three. The width, the, the, the knot is long side is three. So from here to here, that's the total thing. Then going all the way across, that's 10. And it's going again, all the way across. That's the long side of the shape. I don't need to find any missing sides for C. It's all ready to go. So area C equals three, or sorry, 10 times three. Area C equals 30 square centimeters. Let's get my total, total area, add up my three sides, nine plus 15 plus 30, nine plus 15 is 24, 24 plus 30 is 54, 54 square centimeters. Hope you got that too and found that missing side with me. And that takes us right to independent practice. And you'll see these shapes, again, have a few more missing uh, pieces. You can break them up as needed, find the missing sides, and calculate that area. Getting on to when we have some decimals on here to make things a little extra tricky for you, some decimal subtraction in addition. And that's probably the hardest one to work on. Your edge elastic exit ticket is posted and ready to go. Comment below if you need any help. I'm really excited to help you guys with this. We'll review it as well during office hours next week.